The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. And happy Father's Day for those fathers that are out there today. Uh, we rejoice in the great gift of fatherhood. And also, happy solemnity of the most holy trinity, the most holy trinity. And it's uh, uh, kind of find it ironic that we have both of these days that we celebrate on this same day, this Sunday. And um, and, and, and both are, are, are important um, in our society, really um, by the way of the world standards, the world standards has taken us away from both of them and our understanding in this. But first with the Trinity, the most holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is, in fact, God. It's not just our God, it's God. It's God, right? And that's really important to understand because there's a lot of people out in the world today who are like, well, maybe, you know, the Hindus got it right. Maybe they got that right. Maybe we got something's wrong. I don't know. You know, and, and all that. There's a lot of questions going out into the world, and it seems pompous to sit there and say, well, we got the truth. And uh, so people are, like, confused about all this. So this is actually the truth. God is a trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that's reality. That's reality. But because people don't see the trinity, they think it's something elusive that they don't know, that we don't have any way of really knowing. Um, and, and that's false. Um, when we look at other religions in the world today, we got Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism, the old pagan beliefs, and all this other stuff. Uh, what happens there is that humanity is searching for God. And some things they get right. They can figure things out. Humanity can figure some things out. And some things they do get right. So that's why some people will say, well, it seems like it's right over here and this or that. Um, okay, okay. But one thing that seems to be consistent that people get wrong and when humanity searches for God, and it's something that even as Catholics and as Christians, we fall into. We think of God as the almighty, powerful one that'll squash us like a grape. Humanity has a tendency towards going that, just by the very aspect that God is all-powerful. Yes, he's all-powerful. Could he squash us like a grape? Yeah, he can. But when we look at how Jesus revealed himself to us, how God came to us and revealed himself, we understand that that's, even though he is all-powerful, he can squash us like a grape, that's not his character. That's not who he is. All the religions have this great fear of that's what he'll do to us. Nowhere in the Catholic faith does it say that. I don't know any saint that, like, we glorify that says stuff like that. It's always a saint that glorifies his mercy and his kindness and his goodness. See, when God came, God came and he revealed himself through us. That's the difference between Christianity and nearly every other religion other than Judaism. Every other religion, God, everybody is searching for God. Humanity is searching for God, which is a noble thing. But the amazing thing about Christianity is that God searches us out. God wants us to know him, and so he reveals himself to us as he truly is. 
And that's the reality of who Jesus Christ is and how he revealed himself through Jesus. And how did he reveal himself? As a little baby, first thing, Christmas time. He reveals himself as this little baby and would allow himself to be held by human beings. Not just by Mary, who is the Immaculate Conception, but by three shepherd boys. Now, shepherds, hired hand shepherds, were not known to be wholesome people. And yet he, held, he allowed himself to be held. How he was willing to offer himself and the sacrifice on the cross for us. Being subject to human law, even unjust human law, and thereby being condemned to death. And he was willing to even not only do that, but allow himself to be scourged, whipped, and after that, be willing to carry the cross to pursue our salvation so that we can be with him in heaven. This is how God revealed himself, by his very body as that little infant and in everything he did. It shows his character. It shows who he is as God. And so, yes, we can say we have the one true God that we worship and we follow, and anything else is false worship. It's not a bold claim that we make. It's just that God has revealed himself to us, that reality that God has revealed himself to us, and we accept it wholeheartedly. And it ought to be accepted wholeheartedly by God, you know, but in, in, in response to God and what he has done for us. It is not something we should be ashamed of. And as revealed himself as his Father Day is, right? So God reveals his Father. What an awesome thing that he reveals his Father. Now, one of the things that we get wrong in this society today about fatherhood you know, we get a lot of things wrong about the Trinity. You know, everything's pulling us away and everything's more important. Heaven forbid if we actually follow God. We can follow all these sports. We can follow the fashions. We can do this or that. Anything but God. And if you follow God, well, that's really weird. If you follow the truth, that's really weird. You know, if you follow what's really good, right, and holy, that's really strange to this world. That's kind of, I don't know, I find that strange. I'd rather follow, I'd be in with the crowd in heaven, right? So some people get worried about whether or not they're going to be liked or disliked here on earth. Well, what about those in heaven? Are you going to be popular in heaven? Are they going to see your actions and say, whoa? You know? So if you're going to worry about popularity, worry about your popularity in heaven, not your popularity here on earth. The popularity here on earth is going to drag you away from the Trinity. And then when we find in the Trinity the Father and how God reveals himself in the Father. Now, one of the things that's, that's, that we get wrong, we are assuming, and this is where the world assumes, because they think Christianity is just like anything else. Any other religion, it's just the same thing. But by the very fact that God reveals himself as who he is, not just man trying to struggle and figure it out by himself, so when he reveals himself as he is, he reveals himself as Father. That means his existence, and he is very, the Father in heaven is Father, and the humanity here on earth, the men here on earth, those who are fathers, are a mere reflection of the true Father in heaven. See, the world thinks we're, we got a father. Oh, I see a father here. God must be like a father in heaven, just like all the other religions. Oh, we don't know really what God is like, but he must be like a father. Therefore, I'll cast this image of fatherhood here on earth, and I'll cast it onto God. Here, there you go. Yeah, it looks, yeah, it looks right. You know, I'm trying to guess at it, you know. No, Jesus said he is the father in heaven. And, and then we know that he is the Father, so now all fathers here are a mere reflection of the true Father in heaven. Right? And in every man's heart, 
is a fatherly heart. I don't care if you're married or not, you have children or not. Just like in every woman is a maternal heart, whether you have children or not, right? So as men, we're called to that fatherly heart. In every man, in every fatherly heart, there is protection of those who are innocent to live a good life and a holy life, to live their life in a character and integrity for God, to protect the innocent, to raise up the fallen, to always do what is good and right, and to lead, to lead in holiness, to lead in grace. As the Father is a primary means of grace, to God's holy people. So are fathers here on earth to be a primary means of grace for his children, for his spouse, and for all those in his community. And so as men, all men here, I don't care if you're a father or not, if you're a young son, this is what you're called to, to a holiness of life to always do what is right and holy before the sight of God, to be able to shake one's hand, look him in the eye, because you know you don't have sin on your soul. So purity heart is a manly virtue. It's a means by which we protect women to make sure we have purity in our hearts to strive for that because this world wants to take men down, wants to make men wimps. And what is it to be a wimp and what is it to be a man that is strong? It is to be a man of faith and in character and integrity. The world likes to say, well, if you don't like sports, you must be gay. If you like pink, you must be gay. If you, whatever, you know, we can go on, you know, all this stuff. If you don't take advantage of other people, you must be gay. No! To be a man, you must love as God has loved. When we look at what God has done for us, you want to be a man? Ecce homo! Look, behold, the man, Jesus Christ, who was willing to sacrifice himself. And so as men, we're called to respond to God's gift. We're called to respond, to take up that cross, to be willing to suffer for the sacrifice, for the good of others, for our family, for our friends, and for the community, that this place may be a safe place for our family to grow up in, to protect the community together as men. This is what we've been called to as men, to be and to live the first person of the Blessed Trinity the Heavenly Father, and in His Son, Jesus Christ. What an awesome calling. It's a tough calling because it is not natural to something supernatural. It means sacrifice. It means suffering. And so as men, we have to be willing to say yes to the sacrifices that we need to make every day. It means getting up every morning and saying yes to that call, that call towards holiness, the call to bring forth this community and prepare it for the coming of Jesus Christ. To lead this community in courage and in faith, in grace and in holiness. And so I ask you men, young and old, little and big, are you willing to say yes to this call? 